I was just made to learn that uh, Chicago is the center of the universe. I thought it was California. <laughs> I think you're right. Others will agree, but others will not. Thank you, Tom. My name is Nancy Hobel Heinrich, and I, as, I, as uh, Tom said, I'm the principal for information for, for knowledge motifs, which is a consulting, little consulting group based in, in San Mateo, California. Hence my thinking that that's the, ba the center of the universe. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you about today is the stewardship and long-term preservation of earth science data that is, that's uh, being worked on by a federation in, an international federation uh, of earth sciences in, that's, that's based in the U.S., thank you, uh, but is an international organization as well and certainly interested in doing that. What the, my motivation is, or our motivation is, uh, my, my background is from digital libraries and digital preservation with a focus on metadata. Um, and I have just recently started working with Earth Sciences data and found that this is an organization that's very interesting in, in the way it works, but also in, in what it's doing in uh, Earth Sciences and also cross, cross disciplines. So I, I thought that, that uh, perhaps that would be of interest to this group as well. And um, we certainly, the ESIP Federation is interested in developing synergies among uh, other people who are working in this area. So, so that's the motivation. So what I'd like to talk to about today, uh, okay, we'll do this. Do I need that? Did not go right hand, I went left. There you go, under, wrong way. <laughs> okay, so what I'd like to talk about today is uh, a little bit more about what ESIP is and how it works, and then talk about it in terms of the activities and some of the products that have come out of the uh, organization, especially in the data and informatics area and in education and outreach. And, um, and then talk about some of the collaborators we're working with as well already in, in the states and other places, and then, and then ask about synergies with some specific ideas. So um, can you hear me back there, by the way? Everything's OK, great. Thank you. All right, so uh, to this, this is a, uh, a very interesting slide that you can't read, of course. But what it shows is that the Federation, ESA Federation is a knowledge network for uh, all those people who are interested in setting up science data infrastructures, for, especially for, uh, for stewardship and also for access to, to sci or science data. It's definitely community driven. Uh, it's a membership organization, although you don't have to be a member to be involved in it. It's voluntary. Uh, it's it, again distributed. We've heard about distribution uh, uh, already in a couple of the presentations. So it's, it's distributed not only in terms of geography, but also in terms of uh, topical, topical areas and functionality. And it's very open. It's a very uh, collegial and, and, and neutral, neutral organization. Participation is something that's very valued, and collaboration is something that's very valued. So the organization is interested in learning about uh, what your expertise is as an individual coming in, but you also represent an organization quite often. Um, they're, they're interested in leveraging all of that experience and encouraging a free flow of ideas. So uh, and exposing, being exposed to other kinds of opportunities. So it's, it's really a very interesting collaborative environment in that way. It started in 1998 by NASA, which is the uh, national, U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration. They were, it was, it was uh, formed in response to a National Research Council review of the Earth Observation System Data and Information System, or EOSTIS. And uh, that organization, the National Research Co Resources Council, wanted NASA to develop a, a new, a distributed structure that would uh, help that infrastructure build. So instead of re relying only on NASA to really start opening up, because obviously Earth science data is, uh, is more than, than one geographic location, one, more than one organization. So that was the, the, the mm -hmm. interest. They're also interested in uh, observation and research, because a lot of these folks are, are, are all scientists, of course. And then um, application and education of what, of what the information is that's been found. The areas of science are, are fairly broad and includes atmospheric, climate data, terrestrial oceanography, hydrology, environmental data, geology, and ecology. And uh, th there are applied sciences that are part of it as well, including air quality, uh, research, water resources, natural disasters, and carbon, carbon management. The members themselves are um, of four types. 
There are the big types that are, uh, are called type four that are sponsors, and those are include at this point NASA and NOAA, the Oceanographic Information uh, uh, Organization in, in the states. And then other types are uh, a type two, which is, or type one rather, which are uh, the agency data centers. Uh, DAX is what they're called in that, in that vernacular very similar to libraries, although uh, not necessarily. Every, every data center has some access and information services, but they're, they're considered, they're not quite the same thing. There are often libraries and DACs in the, in the same organization, so not quite the same thing as a library in our sense. Um, other, and then NOAA has a lot of data centers too in different, different disciplines, different subject disciplines. Type two, re are, uh, type two members are researchers and developers, including uh, people from academia and government agencies, government labs, and then type three are application developers in commercial, nonprofit, and educational. So there's definitely a cross-functional and cross-sector uh, 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 aspect of the membership, which is very interesting in terms of the types of discussions that happen and the types of uh, solutions that come up. So it's, it's an interesting organization in that way. And as I say, it's... Uh, the, the kinds of things that we that the group is working on are uh, m very often in, in the f uh, terms of uh, in uh, data informatics and data science. So I'll talk about some of the specific areas in a, in a second. But um, I think it's important to recognize that that the organizations are uh, that are involved are are cross functional as well. So there are science organizations, people creating science people doing technology, people involved in education, and then uh, researchers or, or users of the, of the data as well. So uh, the way that it works is that there are a number of different kind of avenues of, of, of involvement. There are in-person meetings that happen uh, twice a, w a year. There is a commons area where that's just new, actually, where a, a lot of the products are, will be, are and will be available for, for con public consumption. There are telecons and Web, uh, WebEx meetings that happen all the time in different subject areas. And, and then the, the organizational part are clusters, what they are called clusters, uh, committees, and working groups. And those are, they've got a governance structure that, that works to make those more, in, uh, more formal to less formal. So uh, what, what is, the, one, one thing I should say about my slides, there are a lot of information in these slides. I'm not going to cover all of them in order to get through, but there's a lot of information here to come back to if you want to look at this if you're interested in some areas. So I'm going to just kind of gloss over some of these rather than, uh, than cover all of them. <coughs> what I want to emphasize in this, uh, this slide in terms of what ESIP does is that uh, there's a lot of emphasis on uh, testing different solutions and uh, professional development, creating opportunities for people to learn more about data management, for instance, that's one we'll talk about in a, in a minute, and outreach, uh, especially to uh, different professional associations and to international organizations. So you can see GEO is there, and GEO is a, a group on Earth observations, and is, is, is RISI is, is an international symposium on remote sensing. So you know there are efforts to find out what other people are doing in, in uh, around the world, and as well as uh, com communicate what's happening you know, through ESIP. So um, the active groups are listed here. The ones that I will talk about briefly are in the Products and Services Committee and the Stewardship Committee, the uh, Data Management Training Working Group, and then the Semantic Web Cluster. And uh, I can talk about the differences between those organizations, if you, the type of organization if you're interested. But what I'd like to do is just talk about kind of the content. In the data and informatics area, which is a big area for ESIP, their definition is, is really co our collaborative activities in those areas, data preservation stewardship, information quality, data products and services, discovery, cloud computing, and semantic web. So all, all the buzzwords. <laughs> uh, the data preservation stewardship products or activities that, that are, are, have been uh, have been produced and are active at the moment are a creation of data stewardship principles, data citation guidelines, uh, provenance, context, and content standard. I'll talk about what that means, that mouthful means, and then identifiers for different data objects. And uh, the, 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 the work that's kind of starting, that's showing up next is our, our more information about more work on identifiers for non-data objects. 
which would mean you know researcher IDs and other kinds of IDs that you could use in, in, in a, a repository sense or an archive sense, and, and others that would al allow the data especially to be more to accessible later. And then uh, micro ontologies. So the data stewardship principles that have been uh, created and accepted by the membership already in January of 2002, the, uh, the, the principles were generated and, as drafts and then uh, vetted in a number of different avenues, those avenues we talked about earlier, telecons and so on and so forth, with people inside and outside of, of ESIF including the American Geophysical Union, AGU, and other organizations like that, and, and then ended up uh, being accepted. So the focus of, them, of, the, of the audience for the pr principles are for data creators, intermediaries, and users. So inter intermediaries would be the kind of people, you know, we are here at the Open Repository, so people who are managing the data and, and acting as an intermedi intermediary between the creators and the, the users. And what I've got there in, in completely in an illegible type is uh, are just some kind of catchwords of what, what those principles are that are being suggested or recommended in the guidelines. So if you're interested, uh, the, the, the URL is at the base there and you can go look at them. They're, they're quite interesting actually to see what kinds of things uh, there have been recommended for, for data stewardship. The second thing are data citation guidelines. And this is something I've heard about a couple times, uh, uh, not citation guidelines per se, but, but the recommendation to create citations or create D and create DOIs for uh, data. This is something that, again, was accepted by the or organization in January of, of this past year. And they were, again, vetted in a number of areas. They were initially based on uh, some existing best practice from the International Polar Year Citation Guidelines, which were created in 2008 and then uh, you know, have been built on, on since then. <coughs> they were iterated within the data stewardship uh, cluster and then committee and then uh, AGU and other venues at that time. The key elements are the kinds of things that you would suggest, uh, uh, surmise would be in a citation, author, date, uh, title, version, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, also in the guidelines, which I think is, is helpful and interesting, is a mapping of those, for what's recommended to the FGDC, the Federal uh, Geospatial Data Committees, metadata. Uh, and ISO 19115, another acronym, another number, uh, which is the, the later metadata recommendation for geospatial data, and then data site, the data site, uh, which are, is the organization that's behind DOI, partly behind DOI. And what's interesting is that after that was this, the citation guidelines were accepted and, and kind of starting to be promulgated, uh, one of the things that's happened recently, people may know, is that Thomson Reuters has just unveiled uh, or, or announced a data citation index that, that in June, they announced this, that they're, they're actually going to be uh, building a data citation index that will make use of the citations that people create for their data. So, so there's hope for those, those who care about that. Nice to see progress. All right, the next thing then is um, this, this mouthful, provenance, context, and content standard, which is still in process. And uh, basically, th what that is, is a way to define what kind of documentation would be useful to keep or create, if it's not already created, for a data set uh, in order to preserve it long term. So it's, uh, it started out as a, on the left side, you'll see a, a, the context, context matrix was created, which was uh, basically a spreadsheet of all kinds of um, types of information, uh, types of, of data that you would, you would want to uh, collect and then how you would document that you know, using um, a list of, using what kind of uh, doc uh, documentation you would create and have uh, in order to uh, produce it. So I'll give you an example here. It's initially started based on input from NOAA and from NASA. NASA's work that was done in 1998 uh, to, to document the same kind of thing in the discussions that have happened in, in other organizations, NASA organizations particularly related to different instruments, mission instruments, uh, sensor instru instruments. It was developed and posted on the, the data ESIP uh, wiki for this, this uh, cluster or this committee. And then the, an initial version was created in March, March of 2011, a later version in June. It's now uh, in, 
in the, in the, in the same process of coming up to a, a revision, but, but based on some work that, has, that NASA has done since then. The categories that are, are part of that contract content matrix are, uh, as you can see, focused mostly on satellite remote sensing data, so pre-flight and pre-operational instrument descriptions, products that you get from the, the uh, data that, that's observed, any metadata that you need in order to facilitate <laughs> discovery and understanding of the usage, and then any product document, documentation, including you know, all the kinds of things you'd think about for a project, who, who's on the team, uh, what the processing history was, what the algorithms are that they're using for putting the data together, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it, they're also based on use cases. They've got a couple use cases that they created, again, that were generated from the, the uh, NASA work in 98, and then other use cases that the data stewardship group came up with. Um, and uh, then, uh, and those are some examples of those are on the right side there. A scientist choosing a data set from multiple data sets or obtaining, how would you obtain a data set, uh, and reproducing a data set. So if those are the kinds of things you as a researcher were interested in doing, what would you need in order to find that? It's basically, are basically the questions. And so what has happened with that as a, re as a result of that work is that um, NASA has come up with a content specification for their data that was published in November uh, 2011 and accepted by NASA that again was focused on Earth science data resulting from the missions, NASA's missions. Um, it includes a reference to separate metadata requirements, so there's, uh, they make a distinction between documentation and metadata different, differently than, than a lot of uh, disciplines do, but uh, metadata meaning, again, related to discovery and usage requirements and, and documentation of, of other kinds of metadata. But the categories were in eight areas, as I said, you can see them listed there, perhaps you can see them listed there, um, but for example, pre-flight and pre-operations, calibration, mm -hmm. science data products, et cetera. But the thing that's interesting is it also includes the rationale for all of those, why this should be there. So again, as an example, um, a pr for pre-flight, the item description uh, would, would be, the things that should be included would be numeric files of instrument sensor characteristics. And you know, there's a further explanation of what kinds of things that should be part of that. And then the rationale at the end there you see is that those measurements made before you deploy the instruments uh, or help establish a baseline. So that kind of thing is important, a baseline for, you know, for the data. So that, that's a specific example of, of you know, how that work has come to some real fruition. And again, uh, it, what happens with it in terms of coming back to ESIP is that it, since it's all, those kinds of things are only focused on remote sensing, they're really uh, the group is interested in, develop, in broadening that to other kinds of data as well. So we'll see, see how that works. So uh, another project that we're working on are identifiers for data objects. I'm going to kind of skip through this a little bit. Um, there was an initial work based on an uh, initial kind of an ab abstract research project, uh, research analysis of which ID schemes would be useful for data objects in, uh, for a couple of purposes, unique identification of data unique location of data, and then citable location, and scientifically unique identification, which is kind of a very interesting area and actually was very difficult to prove. It hasn't really been proven, but that, those are the four different use cases. And they came up with these eight uh, ID schemes that, that they thought would be uh, best to, to consider and were assessed and then made recommendations on those. Um, they, they came up with categories of characteristics in technical, uh, the technical value, user value, and archive value, and then they had a number of questions in each of those areas that they asked each of those schemes to see if they could be answered. Mm -hmm. Those are examples of, of what some of the questions were. Um, and then the second part of it, though, was what, what they recommended, which turned out to be DOI for citable locator and UUID for a unique, uh, unique identifier. Uh, not that surprising, necessarily, but they wanted to, they thought it was important that uh, the, the, uh, those, those recommendations be tested and so have come up with a, 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 a way to test them in an implementation and that's in process right now. So we've got two data sets we're looking at. One is a photo collection of glaciers and the second is, is sensor data from MODIS which is a, a, you know, one, of the, 
one of the category of data from uh, a couple of the satellites. And uh, the, the criteria, those, the use case requirements are translated into testable questions. Again, this is just an example of what they are. I won't go into what those are, uh, but, but the results <coughs> then will be categorized in terms of similar kind of format. H what are those user requirements and, and what are the categories of operational issues? The, the test is really, you know, what does it take to implement these schemes and how would that affect the, the uh, recommendation of the ID schemes that they come up with? So again, those are the questions that are on the, on the right side there, the kinds of questions that are being asked. We're, we've got two more to do, two more, um, I'm working on this one actually, you can probably tell. Um, there are, we've got two more schemes we're working with and then we, we, um, we've got some preliminary findings there as well, which I again won't go into. If you're interested in it, you can come back and look. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more then about um, what other, one more thing that, that the group is doing, which I think would be of interest to this group, and that is working with what the semantic web cluster uh, activity uh, cluster is doing. They're essentially creating different ontologies for different uh, subject areas, uh, one of which is, is suite, which is a, uh, essentially creating an ontology of different kind of phenomena. I've got a wonderful example, a, a, a contribution to the death by diagram uh, uh, competition that we've got going here. I learned about that this, this week, that was great. And then uh, a couple of others on data quality and quality assurance. So that's it, that's my, that's my contribution to death by diagram. It's, it's colored, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. I think you should remember that. But you can see the categories are representation of you know, uh, uh, phenomena, matter, realm, human activities. You know, it's a, it's a big old, uh, it's an it's a attempt to slice what those phenomena are and then break them into subclasses. And it's, it's being used in a lot of places for, uh, for, and also got services built on it, as well as uh, the data quality screening, uh, data quality assurance and the uh, ontologies and others have got services that are being built on top of those. So those, if you're interested in that and how those work, you can both see the ontologies and look at the services for uh, screening, looking at data and finding, it, assessing the quality of it for the data quality s screening service. And then the other one, the multi-sensor data synergy uh, is a way of, again, bringing your own qu criteria for quality to a data set using that to screen the data as well. So they're, they're interesting uh, uh, examples of using ontologies and uh, certainly useful services for, th for the researcher who's interested in that kind of data. Uh, there are other activities and projects that they're working on. You can see them here, one of which is a data server providing RDF, OpenDAP's Hydrax data server, et cetera, other, uh, others there that are, are uh, that kind of data. And then finally, the last thing that I wanted to mention is uh, data management training short courses. Uh, given the fact that uh, people think it's very important that researchers know more about m managing their data, uh, they, the, the, the group has decided to come up with a uh, course, a, sh a course, a set of short courses based on the Khan Academy, which is a, the kind of thing that you, you know, the, the real short, short YouTube or video uh, and, and slide presentations that are available on YouTube on, on topics that fit together in a kind of sequence so you can learn a little bit at a time. I mean, people have probably heard about that, but, but that concept for data management and um, there are, no way is giving financial support for that. It's being vo uh, authored by volunteers in the community, reviewed by people in the community, and then it will be uh, uh, recorded by a pr professional voiceover recorder and made available. One, the first one's up, the first one's there. So mm -hmm. uh, these are the categories that uh, for the data management, the case for data stewardship, data management plans, et cetera, et cetera. You can, again, you can look at that much more if you want to. Uh, it's, it's quite an interesting process. By the way, on this picture, I want you to notice that there is a, a not equal sign here. So the scientists are not the old dogs. <laughs> don't, don't take this wrong. Take, take this home and think that we're, we're talking about scientists being old dogs who don't learn new tricks. It's a not equal sign. Okay, good, everyone agrees, good. <laughs> All right, so the, so the, other, the uh, other thing I wanted to mention is, you know, ESIP is working with the Data One, NSF's Data One and the Data Conservancy, NSF's EarthCube, you know, all kinds of, of organizations that are networks themselves. Definitely interested in, in more. Um, these are a couple of, on the right side, a couple of organizations that, you know, we know about in the states but don't know ex necessarily what people are doing. Maybe uh, there's some here that have been represented as well. 
uh, anyway, if you're interested in, in uh, working with ESIP, it, it would be welcome. Here is more information about ESIP online. Uh, if you want to come to the meeting in two weeks in Madison, Wisconsin, you can still get in. Uh, great farmer's market, I hear. Mm -hmm. So I'm going. It'll be fun. Um, and then uh, I want to acknowledge the, the NASA and ESIP people who have helped me. This is a, a satellite image, unfortunately not very good resolution, but it is Edinburgh. So, so there you have it. And uh, we have, what, a minute for questions? Two minutes, three minutes. Several questions. <laughs> if anybody has a question. Any questions? So I, I had, uh, there's a scratch. I did have one uh, question, Nancy, which is the, um, it seems like the ESIP is largely a, a standards and uh, methodology sharing approach. And from the earth science community, is there a clear trend in terms of the emergence of mega nodes or mega repositories or lots of federations of repositories or is it still a wild west? It's still kind of a wild west. I mean, there, there are definitely discipline specific repositories and uh, you know, curated, curated collections that people are gathering. There, there's not, I think they're not quite in the same place that, that this group is in terms of you know, distributing repositories across environments in the same way. There's talk about that, but um, in some ways, they're more focused on making sure the data is available, uh, making the data ready to be available. So in, in some ways, it seems as if they're in, uh, you know, where open repositories was a couple of years ago, making sure data comes in from the researchers, making sure they know enough about you know, what, what the data could do or should look like. And also, um, they're, they're still, even though ESIP is very interested in making sure all the data is open, not all <laughs> scientists agree with that. So there's, you know, there's a little bit of a battle there going on with the researchers, too, where, where uh, this group probably was in a couple, a couple of years ago, you know, making sure that stuff comes in. So it's not quite the same. But I, you know, there, that's one of the reasons I think it'd be interesting to, to kind of talk across that there are things to learn from, from both organizations. So, so, so follow-up question is how do we get more ESIP people who didn't start in the library environment to a conference like Open Repositories? Well, I'm putting up the slides and I'm going to talk about it next week. So, you know, <laughs> get, and I'm sure there are people here who are working, or, or no scientists or no organizations that, uh, you know, serve the, I mean, is Adina is another one here and mm -hmm. others if you're interested in that or, you know, want to put me in touch or contact Carol Meyer, there, there's definitely opportunity there. So, yeah. Any questions? Time for another question? Need to shake, stand up and shake? More coffee? Yeah. I yeah, have just a quick one, actually. Um, Nancy, I was up in D.C. because I'm very close to D.C. talking to several agencies and it seemed like last year there was a lot of talk about maybe coming together and having a common repository across agencies to gather different types of content. Do you have any information? on if anything has been moving in that direction? I have, no, I have not. I, I know that they're starting, they're, there's an Earth Cube, uh, Earth Cube effort, which is to, to start talking about that, that kind of, that topic as well as other topics related to making data available. Uh, there's a charrette, an Earth Cube charrette that happened in last month where a lot of those <coughs> kinds of issues are being discussed, but I'm, I'm not much, you know, not much progress at the moment. I, again, they're, you know, they're sort of working at the common standards approach. Everybody using FGDC, everybody using uh, ISO, everybody sharing ontologies, you know, that kind of thing. But not necessarily the infrastructure behind uh, the preservation kind of pre repository behind. They have a different concept really. Uh, of it's, it's sort of data center by data center from what I can tell so far. So. All right. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. All right, next up we have our fourth and final uh, presentation.